And the last thing that I want to get to is what I'll call a gradient magnetic field. And I think, do you guys want to break for a minute or you want to, you're okay? We're okay? Everyone's okay? All right. So a gradient magnetic field, and I left this for last because this is going to be extremely important to everything we're going to talk about tomorrow relative to spatial localization and actually forming an image. And by a gradient magnetic field, what I mean is that the MR scanner looks like this. We have our patient lying in the bore. And we apply an external magnetic field, B0. So at this point, and we'll forget about those T2 prime effects for a minute, and we'll assume that this B0 magnetic field is perfectly homogeneous, okay? Such that the same magnetic field strength is experienced everywhere in the board. And what we're going to do next is build a set of electromagnets. So I'm going to put one coil at this end and I'm going to put another coil at this end of the magnet. And the way this is meant to be drawn is that those coils essentially line the bore. So the orientation of these is perpendicular to the static magnetic field. Now, if I place <clears throat> some current in here such that it goes in this direction, I can generate a magnetic field that goes in this direction. Okay? And if I place some current in this one such that it goes in the opposite direction, right, I can generate by my right hand rule, a magnetic field that goes in the opposite direction. If I set these two up so that the magnitude of these magnetic fields applied by each component here in blue is the same but the opposite direction, and if these are placed at either end of the bore, there is going to be some point equidistant between the two of them right, where these magnetic fields will cancel out. Now that is because as we move toward the center of the bore of the magnet, right, from head towards foot or from foot towards head, and as we get farther and farther away from each component, each of these electromagnets, there is with distance a progressive loss of the magnitude of this magnetic field. With any magnetic field, as you move away from the source of the magnetic field, its magnitude decreases. So as we move symmetrically toward the center, there is some point equidistant between the two of these components where there will be two relatively small components that point in opposite directions but have the same magnitude. As a result, at this point, there will be no effect of these gradient magnetic fields. Okay, this point has a name. This is called the isocenter. And it is, in this sense, the isocenter of this gradient magnetic field. These systems are always built so the isocenter of the gradient magnetic field corresponds with the most homogeneous part of the B0 or static magnetic field. So the magnet essentially has one isocenter which is the place where the main magnetic field is as homogeneous as possible and is also the midpoint of this gradient magnetic field. So there is no effect of the gradient magnetic field at this isocenter point which means that if we look at 
what the net magnetic field strength is experienced by the patient at this location, it is exactly the same as the static magnetic field. But if we move, let's say, all the way down toward this end, where we have a large amount of magnetic field generated by the coil near the head, well, the magnetic field generated by the coil near the feet has progressively fallen off, so it is a tiny little thing pointing in the opposite direction. At this location, right, there will be a magnetic field strength experience if we measured in the patient's head, which is a sum of B naught plus this net magnetic field due to the gradient. Since the static magnetic field and the gradient magnetic field right, are pointing in the same direction, this amount will be larger than the static magnetic field. If we go to the other end over here, we also have the sum of B naught plus the gradient magnetic field. However, in this case, right, the net effect, this is what we would have from the one up at the head end a large amount pointing in the opposite direction from the component at the foot end, and the net magnetic field is the sum of B naught plus the gradient, but that gradient is actually pointing in the opposite direction. You guys with me? So there is a lower field strength at the feet and a higher field strength at the head. If we actually plot for this distance Z, right, along this axis, if we plot the net magnetic field strength, it is going to be a linear trajectory like this, where at whatever point is the location of the isocenter, the field strength will, e will be equal to the static magnetic field. As we move further toward the head, it will be stronger. As we move back toward the feet, it will be weaker. So essentially what I've done is I've taken our nice, shimmed, homogeneous magnetic field and destroyed it by applying this gradient magnetic field. The key point is that this gives us a linear gradient, which is completely predictable. So by turning on this gradient magnetic field and what determines the slope of this line is essentially how much power I put into these components. So I could make this relatively flat by putting less power into these, each of these components, meaning making the piece of gradient magnetic field at each end smaller. That would give me less of an incremental change over this dimension or I could pump a lot more power in there and make this steeper. So the more power that goes into the gradient magnetic field, the steeper it is, the less, the flatter it is. And of course, if there's nothing, it's going to be completely flat. Now, this is extremely important. Everything we're going to do related to spatial localization is going to depend on understanding that the magnetic field strength in the presence of a gradient magnetic field changes based on position. And since the magnetic field strength determines, I have that backwards, don't I? Since the frequency of precession is determined by the magnetic field strength, in the presence of this gradient magnetic field, not only are we changing the field strength, but we're actually changing the frequency at which spins precess when we move from one end of the magnet to the other. Any questions about this conceptually about a gradient magnetic field? What I mean by that? Now this gradient magnetic field it has been applied in the Z direction. We will also have gradient magnetic fields that look something like this.
So above and below, at each end I have a pair of magnetic fields. So what that means is that <clears throat> there is a piece of gradient magnetic field that is applied also right, along the Z direction, but actually hang on a second. Let me set this up slightly differently. Okay. So what I will have up here is a gradient magnetic field that is going to cause a change in magnitude that is going from top to bottom. And similarly, I will have a pair of gradient magnetic fields that are in front and behind this that cause a change from back to front. So the way we set this up is that there is an ability to create a gradient magnetic field that is changing in any of these three orthogonal directions. So the one that I started out before at each end of the scanner will give us a right Z gradient magnetic field. Then if we, let me do it like this, set these up above and below, this might be what we would call a right, a Y gradient magnetic field, and then there will be something that is right in front and in back, which is giving us an X gradient magnetic field. Now each of these gradient magnetic fields is represented by a vector. So if, for example, we need or want to look at a gradient magnetic field that is on some oblique orientation, we can simply do that by turning more than one of these on at a time. So right now, if I turn on only the Z gradient magnetic field, the magnetic field is changing from head to foot. If I simultaneously add to that a gradient in the X direction, well, all of it, if it was me, so the Z gradient is causing it to change this way. If I turn on a gradient in the X direction as well, right to left, now all of a sudden it's changing in this direction. And based on the amount of strength of each of those gradient magnetic fields, I can control the orientation of those obliques. If I turn on the third gradient magnetic field as well, then we can make a, some compound oblique. And you can essentially make this gradient magnetic field applied in any oblique direction that you want. Just keep in mind that if you have more than one of these on at the same time, it's not the same as having them on individually. That whenever you have two gradient magnetic fields on at the same time, you're going to see the net effect as an oblique, as an oblique gradient. So any questions about this? Nothing? How is that relevant how you place the body part that you think is in the magnet? Is that relevant? Is it relevant? Um, it definitely can be relevant in a few ways, right? So first of all, you, your question is, you know, in placing a body part that you're going to image in the magnet, does it really matter how you place it or where you position it? So it does in the sense that, first of all, your image quality is always going to be highest in the isocenter of the magnet, where you have the least issue with variability of the static magnetic field, where your shim is the best. So the first thing is that it's always optimal to get the body part that you're interested in in the isocenter. So simply in this type of a scanner where the patient is sliding in from left to right, you would, if you're imaging the, well, do it this way. So if you're putting the patient in to image their head, well, you would want their head to be at isocenter. If you wanted to image their knee, right, so 
Oh, it doesn't let me do it. Okay. So if you would want to image their knee, right, then you might place them in like this, so the area of interest would be at isocenter. So that's one thing. Um, the other is that you need to position the body part with respect to the receiver coil so that it will function properly. Meaning that the coil itself needs to be oriented so that it is orthogonal relative to the direction in which the magnetization is precessing. And if you're using a coil that is formed to a certain body part, you're going to need to make sure that it's positioned so the coil is positioned correctly. With a, especially with a surface coil, if not, if you don't have the coil positioned correctly, you'll essentially have very poor signal reception. If we look at the bore of the scanner, we know we have our static magnetic field, B naught. And we talked about <clears throat> how the Z gradient magnetic field is constructed in such a way that we generate two magnetic fields, one at each end of the bore, in opposite directions, equidistant from this magical location called the isocenter. So that all of this cancels out at the isocenter, there's no net gradient magnetic field. So is it, everyone okay understand how this works? And in this scenario, when the gradient magnetic field is on, if we draw a kind of a diagram of what the net magnetic field looks like, it will look like some strength over here, a little stronger if we get to this end, and a little weaker if we get to that end. Okay, any questions about how we get that? It's just the vector addition of the effect of this gradient magnetic field and B naught. Okay. So, there are also, as we know at this point, there are gradient magnetic fields in the other two orthogonal directions. So the question that I was asked was, well, if we generate a gradient magnetic field along, let's say, the Y dimension, which would be top to bottom in this diagram, well, doesn't that mean, right, that our gradient magnetic field in Y is adding, right, different amounts of magnetic field depending on where you are along that y direction. But each time the orientation of that gradient magnetic field is different, in fact is at 90 degrees to B naught. So if that's the case, then B net would look like this. Right. I mean I'm exaggerating but the orientation of B net would change depending on where you were in the scanner. And that would really complicate our situation. So just to be clear, that's not what's going on. Okay? And what actually is happening is the following. That the gradient magnetic field in Y looks like this. Okay. So the gradient magnetic field is additional magnetic field that's still parallel to B naught, such that as we get closer to isocenter, these are smaller. At isocenter, of course, they cancel out. And when we look at B net at any location, right, it is right, looking like something like this. I mean, this is all a schematic, but my point is that the net static magnetic field is always in the same orientation as B naught. It never changes. And wherever you are in the bore of the magnet, the orientation of the net magnetic field is always the same. 